Welcome to Biggest Little Library. It's Tammy and Amy with the Friday Four, four quick recommendations we think you'll love. I know, and I always make you do that intro because that is a tongue twister. It is. <laughs> recommendations. Recommendations. Yes. So, yes, here we are. We, oh, Tams, did you see my, well, I know you saw it because I made you go pick books, but we're doing our Barnes and Noble haul. I love that. I know. And I love the book that you picked because mm. I almost bought this from Book of the Month. Oh. But they only let me do three. Right. And unfortunately, it didn't make the cut. And then as soon as I got my three in, I was immediately having buyer's remorse, Mm -hmm. wishing I'd bought it. So I saw it at Barnes & Noble and I picked it up. Yeah, it looks really good. I've seen it on a lot of lists. Okay, so tell our listeners what it is. Okay, so this book is called Girl A um, by Abigail Dean. And this is one of those books, I think, that's sort of ripped from the headlines. Okay. And we unfortunately have seen several examples of families that have, for whatever reason, whatever bizarre, Mm -hmm. you know, mental thing is going on, have kept their children really locked in their home. You know, they're prisoners within their own home. Yeah. It's a house of horrors, basically, uh, and the children can't go out, and there's all kinds of mental terrible. abuse, probably physical abuse in some of these examples, too. Right. And so this book is about uh, Lex Gracie, who is the one child who escapes, and because she escapes and then you know gets out her um, younger sister and her older brother, mm-hmm. she mm-hmm. becomes known as Girl A as... The police get involved and her father can't get out of the mess that he's created. Her mother goes to jail for the rest of her life. Oh my goodness. And then her mother dies in jail and the parents leave the house to the kids. So, I mean, I don't Would know. Would you want the house? Right? No. Right. I don't know how, if all of these horrible things are happening, you could go back to the house and mm-hmm. have any kind of... Peace I don't with know it. peace at all about being in the house, but Lex says, "No, let's go," and the siblings go. And what it what it I guess evolves into is sort of this psychological story of all the different memories that the kids have, and how do those how are those memories similar and different, and mm-hmm. what happened to the children differently, right. and what's the legacy of the house going to be? And I think it, I think it looks fantastic. I know it looks like a real psychological page turner. It does. It really does. I think it might scare me. I mean, unsettle me is probably a better yeah, word. I think it probably would me too, just because we have so many examples of mm-hmm. where this, you know, has happened mm-hmm. um, in the United States. I'm not sure about the rest of the world, but we surely, I mean, have surely, seen it surely it happens in other areas. It can't be just a unique, right? I would hope not. Which is horrible. Cause why would right. you do that? But I don't know. Um, Anyway, I think it looks really interesting. And I, if you read Room by Emma Donna, Donahue, Donahue. Donahue mm-hmm. or Sharp Ob- Objects by Gillian Flynn, mm-hmm. I think this is kind of the you know, like the next book the next that you one. might love. The yeah. cover is spectacular. It is. It's really interesting. Yeah. It's like a picture and then a, an overlay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Gr- a Girl A by Abigail Dean. Okay. Super Good. excited. You want me to go next? Yes. Tell me okay, what you well, have Well, okay, there. so I cheated. Did you? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I went, listen, I want to read everything on the Barnes & Noble book haul because know. you know how it is for me. I get in there and I can spend hours shopping and picking things and then trying to cross-reference between my Goodreads list and my book of the month and my, you know, Destiny app, trying to figure out like what I'm missing yes. and what I need to add. So. I picked this up because as soon as I saw the author, Ariel Lawton, Lawton, I guess, I don't know if I'm saying it right, I thought, oh, I need to read that because I read her other book. Oh. So I'm going to talk about both her books. Oh, nice. So this one's the new one. Codename Helene is her newer book that just came out by Ariel Lawton. And her book prior to that, the one that I loved, and I think I gave it like four and a half stars. I don't know if I gave it five. I might have given it five. was called I Was Anastasia. So I think maybe I remember that book when it came out. Yeah. Is this it one, the fictionalized um, account of the woman who said she was Anastasia? Yes. Oh. It's so good. So this one was published. I was Anastasia. I'll talk about that first. Was published in 2018. I picked it up quickly because sometimes I go on these binges where I'm reading a certain like region or mm-hmm. I guess like niche 
genre as we've talked about before right. and I was this was the same time that I was reading A Gentleman in Moscow Ooh. I was like in my Russian zone yes okay yes and currently I was just have you know that I'm re- I'm watching a, a show on Hulu do okay. you have Hulu we do okay called The Great have you seen this no okay so The Great is about Catherine the Great oh that's interesting so set in Russia yes there we are back in Russia so anyway, I was Anastasia is a dual timeline. Oh boy. I just said the magic words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what's really cool about this particular book, and I read it a couple years ago, so I may get a little of it wrong, is it is telling the story of Anastasia, mm-hmm. right? What mm-hmm. we think happened to Anastasia. And then this woman, Anna Anderson, who is claiming to be Anastasia. Right. What was really cool is the timeline moves kind of backward and forward at the same time. And Interesting. They, they meet. Right? Clever. Yeah, it's yes. really clever. Okay. So I will tell you this about the story. It was um, a page turner. Mm. I think the history part of it was excellent. I really enjoyed just um, learning more about that time period. I think everybody wants to know what happens, what happened to like the Romanovs. Right. And like what, you know, like what they went through. Because if you've watched anything on like, I think I was watching the Romanovs on Netflix. I can't remember what it was on, or maybe it was Amazon years ago. Okay. And it's like a fictionalized telling of like what happened, but at the same time, like people who are descendants who claim some sort of like royalty. Uh And so there's a lot of fascination around this particular family. Yes. You know? Yes. So um, it was a delightful read and it was really well written. I think she's a fa- fabulous writer. So then, when we were, what were you going to say? I was just going to say I read years ago a book called *The Kitchen Boy*, a novel of the of the last czar. Oh yeah, and it's by Robert Alexander, and it it draws from kind of the same era mm-hmm. and what happened when they were attacked in their home and did Anastasia get away and was the kitchen yeah. boy someone who helped her? It's it's a great little book. Well, I will tell you when they talk about the. Um, assassination Mm -hmm. of the family in here. It's brutal. Oh, yeah. Like, it's brutal. Mm -hmm. It's hard to believe that, you know, humans can behave that way. But, I mean, I also don't know what it's like to live in a country where you feel oppressed by the, I guess, er, the aristocracy and just Mm -hmm. the regime. So, I guess. So, this was an excellent read. So, this was not off the Barnes & Noble Hall, but it was like a I guess it would be a companion read or a sure. twin read to Codename Helene, which I'm just going to yeah, talk go, about if you don't go mind. For it. Yeah. So this is her new one. This one just came out. And um, this is right back in my sweet pocket genre of, <laughs> <laughs> guess what? Uh-huh. World War II historical oh, yes. fiction. And so, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about this. Like, have I read too much World War II historical fiction? Right. Probably. But I'm drawn in because, again, it's set in France, and you know, I love my French people. Yes. You know that I like poorly speak French. Oh, no. Y- you no, speak it well. I, I speak it very poorly. <laughs> so, you know, I have a French major. And mm-hmm. so, of course, I'm always drawn to like what happened mm-hmm. in the war during that time frame. And we, when we took our kids over to the beaches of Normandy, yes. and that was just, it's kind of neat when you put the history with oh the my actual gosh. spot. Amazing. So this is about um, Nancy Wake, who was actually a real person. I was not aware of that. Okay. That doesn't ring a bell with me. I'm sorry to say. She was obviously an undercover operative. And okay. she was a, um, a New Zealand-born journalist who married a French man who was like an, he was a, like a businessman in France. And then, of course, the war hits. And she ends up, and I don't know how, because mm-hmm. I have not read it yet, but right. I will. But she ends up being working for the resistance and, and kind of nice. being... Yeah, and they say that she had four different names. In fact, the very first wow. line in here is, I'm just going to say, I have gone by many names. Some of them are real. I was given four at birth alone, but most are carefully constructed personas to get me through checkpoints and across borders. So That's a good first line. It is, and you'll notice in here, you can see, I'm not going to show the viewer right. or the listeners, but you can see her four different names are oh, right yeah. here. The White Mouse, Helene. Lucien Carlier and Madame Andre. Nice. So I'm really excited about this one. Yeah. I know. It looks really good. And I do love her. I think her covers are great. Mm -hmm. I just was thinking that they're similar in that there's a woman on the cover Mm -hmm. that's sort of, you know, obscured a bit. Yeah. And you don't see their face. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a thing. It is. We've talked about that before in book club. Mm -hmm. 
And sometimes the women, like, I don't remember when we were talking about lilac girls, how they're walking away. Yes. And there was like this whole, we were like <laughs> researching all the covers where women were walking. We should do that on a Friday for. That would be funny. Women yeah, were we'll do that. Covers where women are walking away. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're going to okay. do that. That's we coming will. your way, listeners, lucky dogs. All right. <laughs> okay, Tams. What is your book? Okay. So my second one is a nonfiction. It's called Think Again by Adam Grant. And he also wrote Give and Take and Originals. Originals I have in the library. You do? Yeah. It's a great cover. It's like this circle that's all like pretty oh, and cool. rainbowish. Cool. So this one's really cool too. It has the, it has a, um, it's not really a burning match, but kind of a burning match because then it's got the water, <laughs> like it's putting it out. So it's, so I get it because of the, what he's talking yeah. about here. Go ahead. Okay. So say. on the back cover, I don't know if you notice this, there's advanced praise. Do you see the people that advanced praise this book? Yeah. Renee Brown. Yep. And Bill and Melinda. Bel- yeah. The Gates. Right. And then the funny one on here is M. Night Shyamalan. I know. I know. His things are terrifying. You just have to know (laughs) know. that when you watch it, you have to wait to go to the end and you know you'll be all right. But those are like A-lister, you know, book readers that are saying, hey, this is a good book. So what is his new book about then? Okay. So what I think is really interesting is he talks about how intelligence is really the ability to think and learn. But in this world that's rapidly changing right. we know through you know social media and everything we we know what's going on you know far faster than we ever have before he said that there's a better set of cognitive skills that we should be really honing in on and, really? and that matter more and that's really the ability to rethink and unlearn oh and that's I why like i like this going. yes so he said we really are um, in our daily lives, we become too comfortable in our own convictions. Right. And we don't listen then to, yeah, th- you know, or, or, or pay any attention to the discomfort of doubt because we just hang on to what, you know, we are sure that we're right about. Does he, I wonder if he's going to address how social media plays into this. Maybe he does. Yeah. I'm, I'm really curious about this because he says that we listen to the opinions that just make us feel good yeah. instead of ideas that make us think hard. And that I think is crucial. We always talk in education about teaching kids to think and be yes. good thinkers. Yes. This makes me think about how we maybe are not as good yeah. now as adults because then we just become stuck in our ways well and we find people and we find ideas that validate our own thinking because it makes yep. us feel better about ourselves mm-hmm. and it makes us feel like we're smart yeah and I think that that's kind of like a protection that we put up so I'm fascinated yes. because he also says that when we do that that we become th- that our beliefs become brittle oh yeah and I, I love that sort of metaphor for that you know long before our bones get brittle our you well, know, our thinking does, our beliefs do. <laughs> Can you think of um, conversations that you've had with older relatives in your life and you, when you were younger Oh yeah, and you walk away and think, what did that old fogey know? You know, mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking right. about? Like where you kind of, and granted there was some wisdom there that was probably lost on my youth, but at the same time, there's that delicate balance of some people get very set in their beliefs. I agree. I yeah. agree. And what I like is that it sounds to me, since I haven't read him before, it sounds to me, it's a little bit like Malcolm Gladwell yeah. where he gives you a scenario, a vignette, you know, a study that mm-hmm. then illustrates what he's talking about. And so here it talks about how um, when you read this, you meet an international debate champion and how he, he or she wins their arguments, okay. how a black musician persuades white supremacists to abandon hate okay. and how Grant himself has even, this gets me because I'm not sure I, how does this happen? He coaxed Yankees fans to root for the Red Sox. <laughs> and that is a die hard. I got to give that know. to my friend, Jim. Yeah. Because he's, you know, he likes UNLV and we have problems with that. So. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, I used to like him, but I guess I don't know. Yeah, I know. Right. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, I've been to a, in Boston to a Yankees. And yeah, Boston that's and crazy. Red Sox, and I can't believe he got right. know, the Yankees fans to do that. But I'm very intrigued. I'm very intrigued as well, because I think that that's what you know, we need is maybe some, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but like clearly I picked up some good books at the Barnes and Noble. You did. You did. Yeah. Yeah. So So tell me yours again. Okay. So I have, um, I was Anastasia by Ariel Lawhon and then codename Helene, same author. 
I love it. And I have Girl A by Abigail Dean and Think Again by Adam Grant. Awesome. For other great book recommendations, check out all of our blogs on our website at biggestlittlelibrary.net. If you're on Apple Podcasts, click the link right in the show notes to head right over to our website. While you're there, sign up for our newsletter. That's right. Do it. We're waiting for you. And we'll see you on Tuesday for episode 75, where we talk about two books from Oprah's list of the most anticipated books of 2021. Yes. And I'm very excited because the books we're talking about have not even been published yet. That's right. Excited. We're really excited. So see See you in the stacks. stacks.